Ahmed, Steve, thank you very much, and thanks to all of you for inviting me and for inviting Seljean out this afternoon. Um, we're very pleased to be part of the LA biotech community now as part of our acquisition of Abraxas. So thank you for the welcome, and we look forward to interacting with uh, many of you. I was asked to speak today a little bit about Celgene and give you some of the history of Celgene, but also to talk about uh, partnering in the biotech world, a little bit of what Celgene looks for, and just our view and, and my perspective on partnering and how it may relate to many of you out in the audience and, and your current efforts. So I'm going to give you a brief introduction on Celgene, a little history of um, the serendipity behind the Celgene story. It certainly was not a straight line from uh, the origins of the company to where we are today, as with many of you who have been in this industry know, it is ups and downs and certainly a circuitous route. Talk a little bit about strategic alliances in the biopharmaceutical industry, what, what we see today out in the marketplace, what we're looking for in partnerships, uh, and what our objectives are in partnering and what the role really is of partnerships at Celgene, a very important role, and I'll talk to you a little bit about how we determine what kind of partnerships we want to enter into and the future of those partnerships at Celgene, which I think is somewhat representative of the industry as a whole. And then certainly I'm happy to answer any questions that uh, any of you may have. So at Celgene, uh, we are building what we hope uh, will be the preeminent company in the industry, certainly in oncology and also in, in inflammatory and immune diseases as well, by discovering and developing innovative therapies that meet unmet medical needs, that truly are extending lives of patients and providing those patients with therapeutic benefits that currently are not available today. Now, this, this slide will build, and I'll talk a little bit about it. Um, again, Celgene is really a, a very interesting story if you look at the likelihood of success from the origins of the company. Now, as many of us know, as we build biotech companies, the, the likelihood that, uh, that we are going to be successful is, is low, but we persevere anyway, and that's what's made the industry great, is that perseverance, that persistence, that ultimately allows many of us to get there. But Celgene was really an unlikely success story spun off from a company called Celanese, a chemical company in, back in the 80s. It was initially focusing really on chemistry, at, at looking at uh, separation technologies and antimers, chiral chemistry, and going to use that kind of technology to come up with new innovative molecules, very similar to what, uh, what Sepracor did. Uh, and there was some success. We found a drug that was uh, an enantiomer of Ritalin, ultimately licensed that drug to Novartis. It's Focalin now. It is out on the market. But um, that was about as far as it got, until one of our scientists was wandering around Rockefeller University and ran into Gila Kaplan, who was on the bottom uh, left of the slide. And Gila was doing some research with thalidomide. Now, those of you who are as old as me remember thalidomide and, and the horrendous uh, history of thalidomide in the pharmaceutical industry. It really changed the way the FDA currently reviews and approves drugs. And thalidomide was marketed as a tranquilizer for women in the early stages of pregnancy, and unfortunately it was an extreme teratogen. So after that incident in the early 60s, thalidomide was put on the shelf. Nobody studied thalidomide, nobody studied the chemistry around the molecule. It was really banished from the industry. Gila was working on it because her father had used the drug for leprosy patients uh, in Israel. It had some sort of inflammatory mechanism, immune modulation mechanism. And our chief scientific officer was talking to her. She was looking for a source of supply. We were a chemistry company. And that began the relationship between Celgene and thalidomide. So ultimately, we developed thalidomide, working with clinicians uh, in many parts of the world for anti-angiogenesis, initially for AIDS wasting and work closely with the FDA, ultimately, to get it approved in leprosy. Because as we were moving forward to try to have it approved in AIDS wasting, triple therapy came out for AIDS patients and obviated the need for an agent to uh, reduce AIDS wasting. But the FDA still wanted to see thalidomide on the market with a restricted distribution system, and we were able to get it approved for leprosy, a disease that it was widely used in. Well, then serendipity hit. And it was a woman whose husband was being treated for multiple myeloma down in, uh, at Dr. Bartlogi's Institute in Arkansas. And she was looking for other solutions and therapies for her husband. She ran into, she actually connected with Dr. Judah Folkman at Boston Children's Hospital, who's working in anti-angiogenesis. And he suggested that thalidomide be tried for her husband. So it was given to him. Unfortunately, it was not successful. But Dr. Bartlogi tried it on a few other patients. 
And lo and behold, thalidomide was a very active agent against multiple myeloma. So ultimately, through the development of, of thalidomide, uh, we came up with other analogs of thalidomide, given that our chemistry history, Revlimid, ultimately Revlimid was approved for multiple myeloma. And uh, here we are today with two drugs for multiple myeloma, and Revlimid and thalidomide. And we, along with other companies in the field, have really revol revolutionized the treatment of this disease. Ten years ago, there were very few therapies available for multiple myeloma. Patients had a very poor prognosis. Today, we have patients on, on Revlimid uh, who have been on the drug for five, six, seven years. And the duration of therapy continues to increase. And our hope is that one day, multiple myeloma and other blood cancers will be treated as HIV AIDS is treated today as a chronic therapy. So through the course of history, we've acquired various companies, most recently Abraxas, that moves us now into solid tumors with Abraxane, uh, a, a really unbelievable technological uh, in, invention from, um, from Abraxas, where they took Paxitaxol, coated it with albumin, created nanoparticles, and it's a much more active agent than Paxitaxol alone in a variety of solid tumors. So throughout our history of developing thalidomide and, uh, and inventing Revlimid, we've moved into stem cells, we uh, did do an IPO in the early 80s and languished for about 10 years at the same uh, slow triple-digit market cap. But today, through acquisitions that I'll talk about, through partnerships, through our own discovery efforts, we've been able to change the course of, of many diseases in oncology and hematology. And through that, from a, a very humble beginning of 8, 10, 12 people who were spun out of, uh, out of Selenese. Today we're over 4,000 employees worldwide, operations in greater than 50 countries uh, with product sales in over 70, and, and revenues, product sales over $3 billion. It's really been in those last 5 to 10 years that this globalization of the company has occurred through the, the growth in thalidomide as a treatment for multiple myeloma and then the introduction of Revlimid worldwide, allowing us to go global uh, with our businesses. And, and we also are an interesting story as it relates to partnering in that we too thought very hard and strategically about whether or not to license out Revlimid worldwide. We were a US-based company with one compound in thalidomide and did we have the audacity to go global with Revlimid Investing in the infrastructure needed to commercialize the product in Europe and in Japan, throughout Asia, now China. And in uh, 2005, we made that decision. And interestingly, that the day that we told the investment community that we were going to go global on our own and it was going to affect our earnings for that year because we were going to have to invest in the business, our stock actually went up 10% because the investment community realized that owning your own molecule worldwide is where you have the most operational leverage and the most financial leverage. So today, given that leverage, uh, we have performed very well in a number of categories. We're in the top five in revenue growth over the last five years, top five in future growth. We have one of the highest percentages of revenue invested in R&D in the industry. Now the absolute numbers are certainly not as great as larger companies, but it's a very high percentage, which allows us to fuel our own pipeline and to do collaborations. And our net margins, by going alone around the world and investing in that infrastructure and then adding products that were from the outside or from our own pipeline, that's allowed us to have tremendous operating leverage and to have some of the highest net margins in the industry. So strategically, we have uh, really a, a number of visions. We're currently focused on expanding our global leadership in hematology and oncology through really changing uh, innovation and commercial execution. Changing the practice of medicine as we've done with multiple myeloma, as we are doing now with Abraxane acquired from Abraxas and some of the other molecules in our pipeline and with our partners. And we hope to become the leader in immune inflammatory diseases, a natural extension from oncology, given the inflammatory and the immune components of, of oncology, with oral compounds that will treat patients with significant unmet net medical needs in psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, but with an oral medication. And revolutionizing the treatment of these debilitating diseases through novel cellular therapeutics. We acquired a company called Anthrogenesis uh, in the late 90s that was working on placental stem cells. It was an idea by a very um, interesting entrepreneur where he saw some very unique uses for these placental stem cells in modulating the immune system. 
And over the last 10 years through our development efforts, we've now entered the clinic in Crohn's disease, multiple sclerosis, and other uh, immunological diseases with the hope that we will be one of the leaders in this emerging field of cellular therapeutics through the use of stem cells. We continue to retain our commitment to science, to research, to innovation, to drive our organic growth, to sustain that innovation, looking to partners as well as our own internal pipeline to do that, and leverage our success as the partner of choice. It wasn't many years ago when I started at Celgene in business development. We were a thalidomide company with a leprosy indication, a modest sales force in the US, and I had to beg companies to come and talk to us about partnering their products. Now today we're in the fortunate position of having a number of products worldwide and having the infrastructure worldwide to partner and to develop others' products through the development, the regulatory approvals, and ultimately the successful commercialization. So today we really are a very good blend of what we've brought in from the outside and what we've developed internally. Revlimid, our leading product, was developed internally. It's a thalidomide analog, as I mentioned, and it was our structural chemistry that came up with that agent. But Videza came to us through the acquisition of Farmian Corporation several years ago. Farmian had taken Videza, licensed it in from other companies who really had never developed it, and did all the clinical work to show a survival advantage in a disease called myelodysplastic syndrome, the first time ever a survival advantage had been shown in this particular disease. For us, that was data that caused us then to acquire the company and complete the commercialization of this product around the world. Thalidomide was, uh, thalamid is thalidomide in the U.S. and in Europe. And Instadax came to us just last year from a small company called Gloucester, a company of less than 20 people that took this molecule. Oops. that took this molecule from the beginning all the way through clinical development as a venture-backed company. And at the time of approval, we decided that this was a meaningful molecule that was going to complement our hematology portfolio, and we acquired Gloucester last year. And I'll talk a little bit about the structure of that acquisition, because that allows us to risk share with the investors in, in Gloucester, 